680 News Business Editor Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, uh, we shared with everyone earlier in the show how Ontario plans to eventually raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Now you're looking at how it stacks up around the world. Yeah, you know, we would actually put uh, Ontario, Francis, towards the top of the list as far as the highest minimum wages are concerned. Right now, Australia has one of the highest uh, minimum wages in the world at about $16.88 when you do the currency conversion. You do, though, have to be 21 years or of age or older to uh, apply for that or to receive that in Australia. Luxembourg, $14.24. France, about $13.54. The U.K., a little over $11.50. In the U.S., the national minimum wage is $7.25 U.S., though it does differ a bit from state to state. Mexico, 66 cents. Cuba, 5 cents an hour. Uganda, just a penny mm. an hour. Some countries, Francis, have very complicated minimum wage systems. In India, there's more than 1,200 different types of minimum wages, depending on who you are and where you work. Wow. Now, one of the simplest ways to actually boost your salary is by doing something that 71% of employees do not do. What is it? Just ask. Mm -hmm. Hey, Francis, I need more money. Can you give me some more money? 71% uh, of employees don't negotiate their salary when they get a job. 84% of those that do ask actually get something a bit more than what they're offered. 20% that ask for more dough received an 11 to 20% increase. Men were a little bit more likely to ask for more money than women. You know, workplace experts say a lot of people are afraid to ask because they think management will say no, and as a result, they undervalue their services. Ask and you shall receive, Francis. Let's make a pack, Richard. I'll ask if you ask. Okay, let's go. We'll march into the boss's office yes. after work. Let's do it. Sounds good. So 20 years ago, it was just a small and profitable bookseller, but that same company is marking a major milestone today. Amazon.com stock hitting $1,000 per share. Uh, it's up 50,000% since it went public. 20 years ago. It actually closed a little bit below the $1,000 mark, but it did hit it. Uh, it beat Google to that big milestone. Uh, $1,000 invested in Amazon in 1997 would be worth half a million today. The company just recently started turning a profit, so it's seeing more investment into it. You might think it's ripe for a stock split, though you don't see that too much in the tech biz these days. They wear the $1,000 mark like a, a badge of honor. Uh, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, Francis, closing in on the title of richest person in, in the world as a result of this. Hmm. His net worth $85 billion, getting close to Bill Gates, who has a net worth of $88 billion. Wow. They're not hurting. No, they're not. Just thinking, if I was one of their employees, I'd be going and asking for a raise. Yes, those are the people you should <laughs> ask for a raise for. So one of the biggest names in the pizza biz is now pushing the limits of everything we think is possible when it comes to pizza delivery. You're going to hear this and you're going to say, Richard, you're, you're off your rocker. You've gone crazy. But no. It's true. Domino's is delivering pizzas now in 10 minutes. This is in Australia and New Zealand they're doing this. They may bring the concept to North America. How are they doing it? Well, as soon as the pizza is ordered, it hits a assembly line and the uh, guys that make it sprinkle the toppings on at lightning fast speed. It's put in a high temperature oven that cooks it in just two minutes. Uh, it then is given to the delivery person. They use high speed bikes or cars with GPS technology that navigates the traffic. Domino's though also starting to use drone technology. The pizza loaded onto a drone and it's flowing off to your house. Uh, they're using all sorts of different toppings to cut differently so they cook at a very fast pace. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes, Francis, from when you order to when the pizza gets to your place. Wow, what a world we live in. You know what I have to say to that? What? Richard, you're off your rocker, you're crazy. <laughs> Fake news. No, it's true, Francis, and this is a real game changer for me, let me tell no you. No kidding. I'm sure it is. <laughs> so finally, Richard, a new product hitting the market that may have Toronto bike riders ringing their bells in approval. Yeah, you know, it's dangerous. It can be dangerous riding a bike. The drivers in cars, they can't see and they can't hear you, but this is a smart bike bell. Looks like a real bell, but when you ring it, it sends out a signal that is broadcast to the radios of the cars around you. They hear a little animated bell sound coming through their radio. It even works if they're listening to an MP3 or a CD. Uh, this is uh, created by a French insurance company. Not on the market yet, but it will be soon. Kind of an interesting modern take on the old bike bell, Francis. Amazing. That would work so well in this city. Except you'd hear the bells all the time on you on the radio. You'd be, you might. 680 would be, you know, cutting in with bell sounds, but... That Might wouldn't be, be good safer. unless it was the opening or closing bell. That would be <laughs> there okay. you go, which I ring at four o'clock every evening. <laughs> Thank you, Richard.